All right, now, as you've heard, President Cyril Ramaphosa will visit Yagos Fontaine in the Free State today. That's after a mine dam wall collapsed, sending a river of sludge through the town. Emergency services have confirmed at least one death, and there are concerns there may be more casualties. More than 30 people have been treated for injuries. Ramaphosa has wished them a speedy recovery. He says he appreciates the work of rescue and recovery teams over the last 24 hours. All right, let's uh, go to Yagras Fontaine in the Free State. That's where we find my colleague and ENC reporter Mangoba Mkunu. Uh, Mangoba, such distraction there or destruction uh, behind you and around you. Any, um, you know, sign of the president uh, arriving or has he already? Well, I must say at this particular point, we are told that uh, the president will be arriving here this afternoon. We're not sure of the time yet. What we do know at this particular point is that there are meetings that are currently taking uh, place between the national disaster teams that are here on the ground. Of course, you recall that uh, the uh, cooperative minister, Angosa Zanaglamini Zuma, had indicated that the national government will send uh, teams here to assist the provincial national disaster teams that are here on the ground. There's also been a joint operation sent that has been set up here in Yagas Fontaine just to deal with some of the issues to assess the extent of the damage. Of course, Masiko, it's quite immense when you look around here and you look at the houses that have been destroyed here. It just gives you a picture of just how big and how strong that torrent was that came into this uh, neighborhood in Charlesville. Uh, you can see there, Masiko, where the people are standing there in the background. This used to be some of the houses that have been totally destroyed. They were swept away Way. We've seen cars that have also been swept away. We've seen electrical cables that have been destroyed. But I think also just, uh, you know, looking at the roads into this particular area, some of the areas here are completely isolated. You cannot drive over, you know, some of the roads in this particular area. And what I've been seeing uh, here this morning are just some of the residents who, of course, at this particular stage, just trying to see what is happening, just trying to find out if anything is salvageable at this particular point. But there's also been animals that have been washed away, there have been sheep, there have been livestock that have been destroyed. And just speaking earlier on to one of the councillors, or in fact the mayor here of this place, telling us that, you know, the damage is so severe that over 250 people have been displaced. And these are people, Masiko, who at this particular point don't have anywhere to go. But also, as I just mentioned a short while ago, animals are also in distress. The SPCA is also here on the ground uh, just to try and assist those animals. And uh, I've got one of their representatives Representatives here at one, uh, just uh, you know, he's just finished Masiko saving, uh, you know, a stray cat that was found here, stuck in this, uh, you know, sludge that is all over the town. Uh, Duan, just paint us a picture of how bad the situation is in terms of animals. I see that you are carrying one uh, animal that you just rescued here. In terms, it's very bad that happened here. Yeah? Um, the most water went through the emerging farmers um, crawls. So this is where all the pigs and cattle and goats and sheep was. And it was all washed away. Some of the farmers lost more than 200, 300 cattle, sheep and pigs, all those animals. And to think about all the dogs and cats that was also placed on others' houses. We rescued r roughly about 500 animals yesterday. That's from the dogs, cats, cattle, sheep, every type of animals. And wildlife animals, a lot of small wildlife animals we also rescued. Today was already hard. We've been here since this morning, six o'clock, if not earlier. We already rescued also about two, three hundred animals that we are taking to our SPCA to be washed off and to get veterinary treatment. Unfortunately, some of these animals ingested some of this mud mm -hmm. that was not good for their lungs and for their stomachs and had to be humanely euthanized mm -hmm. to end the suffering. There's a lot of animals who didn't survive this and some of those animals we helped by humanely euthanized them to end the suffering. It's very sad what happened here and there's a lot of owners still looking for their cattle, sheep, dogs. A lot of owners come and crying for us. They can't find the animals. And we've been um, shoulder deep in, in this mud. And as we walk, we walk past these animals underwater. Some dogs, unfortunately, was chained before and they couldn't escape this disaster. Mm -hmm. So that is, part, that is very sad to see those animals that was caged um, Chained and even the emerging farmers that was it was six o'clock in the morning all these animals was in crawl so they didn't have chance to escape any of these um, disasters. I can see it's quite emotional to mm. you of course um, are the search and rescue for these animals still continuing on your side? 
Yes, um, we, have a, we have a team from Kimberley SPCA, Virginia SPCA. Um, we ourselves from Bloemfontein SPCA have been here since yesterday. And today um, our national office also joined us during the operation hour. So we have, we have a, a team on the ground helping all of these animals. Okay, well, thank you for doing such a good job. I know it's very difficult under these conditions. Well, Masiko, I'm just going to move this side just to show you what's happening here on this side. This is one of the main streets here. In fact, it's uh, the main street that connects uh, this particular town, Charlesville, where most of the destruction occurred. Uh, this particular street leads to the town of Yachas uh, Fontaine. But, uh, Masiko, at this current moment, nothing is moving here. In fact, there is sludge all over this particular road, and we are seeing uh, some TLBs and tractors that are coming coming here just to try and clear some of the rubble. And what you're seeing there, Masiko, in the distance, that's where that uh, mudslide had occurred. That's where the dam had broken its bank and uh, flooding uh, this particular town. And you can see clearly that uh, path of destruction, the water where it traveled and uh, went into this particular town. And of course, it is quite a huge uh, destruction that occurred here in this particular area. There are about uh, nine houses that have been totally destroyed and about 20 of them that have been partially destroyed but uh, many of uh, the owners here are saying that uh, even moving back and going back to those houses won't be easy because they still mud in the houses they still sludge in the houses and uh, many people saying that they lost their entire livelihoods when uh, of course this flooding had hit this particular area so we are seeing such and rescue teams here on the ground today they're trying of course to still look uh, if there are people that are in distress we know that uh, many of them have been evacuated but as far as the evacuations are concerned we are told that those people have now been evacuated to nearby halls some have been evacuated to as far as Bloemfontein just to try and uh, contain this particular situation but I can tell you Masiko that it will take time uh, for lives to actually be uh, regained here or for normal life to be regained in this particular area due to the extensive damage that has been caused here many community members this morning still you know wanting to find answers asking who should be held accountable a question you also posed earlier, because we understand that uh, this mine used to be owned by De Beers, but however, it was sold in 2010. But there seems to be some confusion, Masiko, when it comes to you know the consortium that had bought this mine and whether or not they are going to take any responsibility for this. Uh, we are still going to try, perhaps, to speak to them uh, as far as that is concerned. But the community is saying that there have been many issues that they've been raising with this mine. They've been unhappy with how this mine had been operating, and there are even allegations that there was illegal mining that was taking place here. You know that this was a dam, a tailings dam that was meant to process some of those, you know, um, minerals that had been mined previously. It was not meant to be mining at this particular stage, but the allegations from community members that this mine might actually had been mining at the time, and this is what has led to this water uh, breaking rank ranks there at that particular dam. So more questions from community members, but of course we know that uh, the president will be coming here and that uh, the mine itself will be called to answer on some of these allegations. Mm, all right, Mangoba Mkunu, with that story, uh, such destruction around that community. And it also brings the question, of course, around, uh, you know, the fact that uh, we give mi li mining licenses in South Africa and it looks like people get to do whatever they want. And, of course, we know ESCOM has said that it hopes to restore power in that area uh, by tomorrow.